I want to share with you a few telltale signs of when we're stuck in this masquerade. And I have been stuck there so much and wanting to get free of it. One of them is a fear of failure. And it's a fear that I'm going to mess up. You know, people sometimes ask me, what was it like when you first were on the daily broadcast? I had no plans to do that. I had no plans to come to focus on the family. It was the Lord who just brought me to focus. And, you know, a year later, Dr. Dobson retires and Focus is looking around saying, well, who's left? Who can we put on the radio? And somehow I drew the short straw. And people say, you know, what, do you, what were you thinking when you first went on the radio? I was just thinking, Lord, help me not mess this up. And this is a big, a big chance to fail. But that fear of failure isn't just when we're in the public eye. It's, it's failing in your marriage. It's failing as a parent. Uh, do people see my weaknesses? That tells us that we're stuck in this, in this masquerade. We're stuck in this game. Competition in the body of Christ. And this is so human, and we don't talk about it. If you're a singer, you can like speakers, but when another singer comes on stage, you want to know who's better. It's true. If you're a church, you might say, I pray that the Lord would bless this church down the street, but in your heart of hearts you're saying, but not as much as he blesses our church. Uh, it's the competition. Who's got more stars? Who's succeeding? That's a telltale sign, again, that we're serving out of the flesh, and we're serving according to the world's model and not our own. And then concern for the praise of man, the praise or rejection of man, concern about those stickers. And, uh, and when I first came to focus on the family and knew that the Lord was calling me to a more public ministry, I know my weakness. And I know that I have a proud heart that wants the praise of man. And I, I was scared to death about falling into that. And I remember just uh, reciting the verse over and over and over again uh, from, I think it's the book of Jude, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to him be the power and the glory. Only he is able to keep us from wanting the praise of man and fearing the rejection of man. And then when I ended up on the daily broadcast, let me tell you, the stickers start flying. Can you imagine? I'm really glad I can't see the people I talk to on the radio. But they, they find it uh, uh, chances to write into us all the time. They email us, they call us, and they give us stickers. And some of them, those gold star stickers, wow, they feel so good when someone says, wow, Julie just asked my question, and I love listening to her on the radio, and it's like gold star, gold star. Uh, and then there's those gray dot stickers, and they don't feel so good. Uh, one of them that I got shortly after I started the radio broadcast says, Dr. Julie Slattery does not have a radio voice. It grates on the ears. <laughs> I personally change to a different radio station when she comes on, even though the topics may interest me. Unless changes are made to focus on the talent side, I don't see the future of focus as being promising. Love, Mom. No. <laughs> she just wanted me to move back to Akron. <laughs> But, but I, there are hundreds of things like that, that, that some of them are, are truth, some of them are just very critical and mean-spirited. But I want to tell you something. The gold stars are as dangerous, if not more dangerous, than the gray dots. And some of you are covered with the gray dots, and you just want to be rid of them, and you just want to know that God is using you, and you want to be encouraged, and you want the Lord to say to you, my, my daughter, I know you feel like a failure, but I can pour through you. And some of you are covered with gold stars. And you need to be just as desperate to get rid of them, to be free from them, so that you're not shoveling sand. Who wants to do that? I want to be free from that. And the Word of God tells us how to be free. The Apostle Paul, if you read his epistles, really looking for the transformation that happened in his life, this is the transformation that he talks about all throughout his writings. Let me give you a few examples of verses that show the Apostle Paul talking about how to be free from this. In 2 Corinthians 5.16, he says, From now on we regard no one from a worldly, from a worldly point of view. 2 Corinthians 12.9, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness, so the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Boasting in your weakness is going to get you a lot of great dots. Who would want to do that? And he says, I want to do that because I want people to know it's the power of Christ. He says in Philippians chapter 2, 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. In humility, value others above yourselves. Are you valuing those women around your table right now more than you value yourself, regardless of what the world would say about what they're doing? And then 1 Thessalonians 2, 6, as for human praise, we have never sought it from you or from anyone else. This was a man who knew how to be free from the stickers. He knew how to be free from the praise of human man. He knew how to be free from the bondage of what people think. And he was free to obey the Lord and to say whatever God put on his heart without worrying about what people thought or how people valued him. It was a man who knew the value of humbling himself so that God might be lifted up and so that other people might be encouraged. And I want that. Do you want that? How badly do you want that? Have you, have you tried to rip off the mask? Have you tried to throw away the sticker box and you don't know how to do it? You don't know how to get there? Well, I have. I've struggled with this. Lord, how do I go into focus on the family without one thought about what people think? My only thought being, Lord, let me speak the words that you give. How do I go into my job and say, it's yours to take or give? I'm not clinging to anything. How do I value the ministry to one very broken person as much as I value a ministry that might speak to millions? Because God values them equally. And he says, if you will be faithful with the little things I give you to do, I will put you in charge of many things because I know where your heart is. I want that. I want that so bad. And I began to pray for that and pray for that and seek that. Now, I wrote Beyond the Masquerade again five or six years ago and began, you know, just the soul journey of what does this look like. And God doesn't always give you all the answers right when you're seeking them. And it's a journey he continues to take me on and show me. And he works in some pretty crazy ways. Have you noticed that? God's ways are not our ways. And the Lord took me on another stage in this journey about a year and a half ago. And it started with my husband coming home one day and saying, Julie, I think we need to do this new exercise program called P90X. <laughs> they have that in Pittsburgh too? Has anybody tried P90X? Okay, but you guys know, some of you know what it is. It's this insane workout video program that's supposed to cause muscle confusion. Like, who wants muscle confusion? <laughs> I don't. But my husband, Mike, said, no, honey, it'll be fun. I'm like, is this your way of telling me I'm getting fat? Come on, just say it, OK? He's like, no, we can do it together. And, and uh, you have to work out for about an hour every day, uh, at least six days a week for 90 days. And uh, it's not easy workouts. I mean, there were times where you feel like throwing up. It's really fun. <laughs> so you know, my husband and I both work, and we're raising three boys. So the only time that I could find to do P90X with him was early in the morning. And I'm not a morning person at all. So to add on the fun, let's get up at 4.30, woohoo, and work out together. <laughs> so my husband and I start this, and he lasts three days. <laughs> and then he starts hitting snooze. But, but I am kind of compulsive. I'm the type that if I start something, I'm going to finish it. I can't stop, and I'm hooked on this stuff. So I start getting up every morning at 4.30 in the morning with Tony Horton doing my P90X. And you know, he says, all you got to do is keep push and play. And so I start doing it. And you know, around month two, I'm like, wow, this stuff works. You know, I've got triceps. And I can do a couple of chin-ups and push-ups. And my, my teenage boys can't push me around so much anymore. And it was good. I mean, I, my abs, I mean, I wouldn't say I had a, a six-pack, but maybe at least a two-pack. I mean, it was, and I, it was cool. I mean, my body was starting to really change. Now, when I got to about day 87, 88, 89, and I'm coming up in the morning to get ready for work. And I'm feeling good about my body. A couple days, I just heard the Lord say, well, Julie, that's great. Good for you. But would you be willing to do this with me? 
would you be willing to do a spiritual P90X? You could get up at 4.30 in the morning to train your body, which is decaying anyway. You can't stop it. <laughs> and if this is the kind of change you see in your body, what kind of change would you see in your faith and in your walk with me if you made that commitment with me? And the first few days I heard that, I thought, hmm, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> But towards the end, I'm like, okay, God, I will take a step of obedience. I don't know what it looks like to get up at 4.30 every morning to just be with you for an hour, but I'll see what happens. And so the Lord used P90X to teach me to get up in the morning, and I started doing that. And I didn't know where to start, but I just started asking him, okay, Tony Horton tells me what to do every day. You t what do I do? <laughs> I mean, I, it's hard to pray at 4.30 in the morning and not fall asleep. And, you know, where do I start? And I just started just seeking him. And one of the first things that I, I realized as I started to seek him was that I didn't really know how much I loved the Lord. Because it says in the Word of God that the greatest commandment is that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And I thought, wow, Lord, I know that I love you with my will and with my strength and with my mind, but I don't know that I love you with my heart. I don't know what that is to love you with my heart. Would you, would you show me what it is to love you with my heart? And that was the first step of seeking him at a deeper level. And then the Lord, I am telling you, ladies, he just started working so mightily. A few weeks later, he connected me. I get to meet all kinds of really cool people doing the daily broadcast. But he connected me with a woman named Linda Dillo, who we just immediately connected when I interviewed with her and you know, had to start emailing each other and found that our hearts were similar. And uh, she invited me to go, just me and her, on a prayer and fasting retreat. And I thought, well, that's a little weird. I don't know her that well. But... Uh, <laughs> But we'll see what happens. So, uh, so we go on this retreat. And Linda is a woman who just walks with the Spirit of God. She is a worshiper of the Lord. And at that retreat, in 24 hours, something happened. I don't know what to call it. Based on your theology, you might call it different things. But the Holy Spirit got hold of me in a way that I had never known. And I went away from that retreat, not just getting up at 4.30 in the morning, but not being able to get enough of God. Just with a hunger that I can't describe, a hunger for Him, a hunger for His Word, a hunger for His presence that I can't describe. I mean, it was like every waking hour that I wasn't taking care of my kids and my husband and that I wasn't at work had to be spent seeking the Lord. And that's not human. That has to come from the Lord. But it starts with the step of obedience. It starts with that step of saying, Lord, I hear you calling me. And I don't know what that means in your life, whether it means getting up early or if it means taking a step of obedience in your marriage or serving, but taking a step of obedience. And do you know how much he wants us to be free? Do you know how much he wants to liberally pour his spirit upon us? and take our faces in his hand so all we can see is him. He wants that more than we want it. But are we willing to take that step of obedience?